HH catamarans are renowned for their super high performance, technology filled carbon catamarans that are just as comfortable on the race course as they are crossing oceans. However, their Ocean Cruising 50 takes the performance hull and optimises the design into a more affordable package ideal for liveaboard cruising couples and families. Join us as our very own Phil Fontaine catches up with Seth Hines for the full tour of the Ocean Bound OC50. So Chef, we're on the OC50, it's been really well received at the show, I know I've thoroughly enjoyed walking our customers through it, yeah. why don't you just tell us a little bit about it please? Yeah, so this is our, our Ocean Cruising 50, yep. so we at HH Catamarans we make a kind of two versions of the 50 and our 44, we make an HH version and, and the Ocean Cruising version. And what's the difference? Well, so, so both are cruising boats, uh, but the HH kind of has the latest greatest uh, racing technology it's a high performance kind of one, thrown it? into it. It's a high yeah. performance yeah. version. But if you're really not a racer, you're not going to plan on ever you know racing even in kind of a casual regatta. You're more just about cruising, but you still want kind of the luxury and the fit and finish uh, that HH is known for and a performance cruising catamaran. Then you might go for our ocean cruising version of the boat. Right, but the ocean cruiser, my understanding is, it's still a fairly good yeah. performing boat. This well, it is. is. A, it's a large boat, but it yeah. actually sails really well in ten knots of wind. Yeah. So the owner of this boat, um, actually, this is hull one of, of the OC50, yeah. and he really helped us design it and, and come up with the concept. And, and it was the boat that he wanted that wasn't kind of on the market. And what he wanted is exactly what you're talking about. He wanted a, you know, a, a truly performance oriented boat. You know, the hull lines and the shapes of this boat are much like the uh, ORC Marcedon Composites boat. So clearly the design emphasis, just like our other boats, is all about performance first. So performance and then luxury. Yep. And then I would say the last thing that we're really, really well known for is our carbon construction. In fact, that's our tagline, <laughs> performance, luxury, carbon construction. Right. Uh, and, and I mention that because this boat, you know, the, the HH version would be 100% carbon fiber, the hull, the decks, everything, you know, all the okay, bulkheads. Yeah. Uh, this boat is an e-glass boat and all of the bulkheads are carbon fiber. Yeah. Uh, it's a significant cost saving for our owners, yes. uh, but you're still getting that performance layout and the performance hull. One of the things that really stood out to me though is, is like the, the beautiful, the lines, This is the e-glass is, is so perfect, the finishing there, that it's a boat that you could have painted if you wanted. Oh, for sure. Because there's no rippling or finishing in it will give you that perfect finish. Well, that's our e-glass construction yep. uh, with epoxy. So yep. um, you know, not many boat builders build in epoxy. Epoxy is the most expensive resin to use, uh, but it really is the strongest and the, and the highest quality. Yep. Um, and that kind of sums up for me as we've been walking the boat, you know, people around the boat this week, it's kind of a no compromise, no corners cut boat where uh, you know, Paul Hakes, our builder, and the team, you know, that build these boats, there's really no corners cut. You know, everything is the, high, the best uh, grade materials, uh, the best equipment, the best deck gear, the best lines, the best, yes. uh, you know, all, we really only try to put on the best equipment on these boats. Not only that e the e-glass epoxy can finish, but to me, the boat is almost two and a half years old. There is not one crack. There are no stress points. The quality of the finishing, even now, while it's been well used by its current owner, this boat is immaculate. Yeah, it's been fun showing people around and telling them that it's two years old because it does look brand new. And you know, the owners, to give them credit, they've taken great care of this boat yeah. and they've really enjoyed it. Yes, that's what they're there for, use yeah. them. I, the, one last point on the sailing, I, I, when we were talking with Chris during the week, he was saying to me that the boats are eerily quiet when you're underway. The, you know, some people get worried about carbon and the chatter that can come through the hull and so on. Yeah. And he was explaining to me how the, the construction of it, there's still the foam centre through the line, as I understand, which then helps to totally insulate sound. He was telling me that he's been underway at 25, 30 knots on an HH catamaran yeah. and been able to lay in, in ear, particularly the aft cabins, which are the main cabins, um, and it's silent which I just think is amazing. Well, it's silent more so because of the stiffness and the epoxy and the carbon bulkheads, you know, right. and the boat, the boat is incredibly stiff. And so that's important in, in any catamaran because you have two hulls that are really trying to go opposite directions. Right. Yeah. And so to build a stiff boat, uh, you know, one of the things we'll really focus on probably up on the bow is our carbon lingeron. You know, it's, an, it's a really structural part of the boat and yep. very strong with 100% carbon. Yep. Uh, but but uh, yeah, you're right, and Chris is right. The, uh, the boat downstairs, because of the stiffness, there's no, Furniture creaking of any no, any any kind. No. Um, it's a it's a you know there, there is a, a perception that carbon is loud, but I, I don't really understand that because 
Uh, you know, the boats are still made with the same sort of foam uh, core. Yes. Uh, and and they're really, you know, the whole shape is so efficient. They're not not really slamming on the waves. Yeah, wow, uh, that's amazing. And I, I also understand that that Langeron, which we'll show through the footage later on, but that whilst it may be a standard fixture with the front beam, the Langeron, so on, being in aluminium, every single customer has taken the carbon option because it's just a piece of art. Yeah, I don't even know what it would look like, actually. Yeah, so yeah. that would be the standard uh, that would come on these boats, on the OC versions, would be an aluminium cross beam and Landron and uh, or aluminum cross beam and fiberglass Landron. Um, but we have, we, we've never built one, so never I don't know what one. it would look exactly. like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just something very, very special that we look forward to showing the folks in the footage later. Um, where should we start walking through the boat? Should we start up, up top? Should we go I, through? Yeah, what I think do you think is the easiest way to show everybody what we're talking about? You know, this is a sailing boat, so uh, let's maybe start the sailing equipment. So Seth, here we are on the bow of the, the IC50. Uh, you've got your hands on the beautiful uh, front beam and carbon lingeron. Why don't you tell us a little bit about trying to sail or sailing one of these beautiful boats? Okay. Yeah, this this is a showpiece. As we mentioned, this is this is the piece we we're talking about where uh, we've never seen what it would look like if you didn't if you didn't pick this option. It comes standard in our HH version, but yes. for the ocean cruising version, it is an option, and it's a great option. Uh, what it does is it adds tremendous stiffness to the boat. It is carbon fiber, and it is all built in house in our factory. This isn't outsourced. Uh, and it's all one piece too. So you've got your carbon lingeron, carbon crossbeam, carbon seagull striker. striker. And uh, what's unique about it is the anchor chain actually runs through a conduit inside the, the lingeron, which is, which is pretty cool. Yep. And then there's an integrated anchor wash down. So every time you bring your anchor up, it uh, washes it with fresh water. So no more out here with the hose trying to wash everything away? No, and, it, and it's good for your chain. You know, it helps the, keep the chain uh, lasting a little bit longer. Absolutely. But really what it's all about is, is weight savings and strength. Okay. So, with weight forward of the mast, you really want to try to limit that as much as humanly possible. As you can see throughout our entire design principle, that's a very important thing. We don't build our cabins over the, over the um, bridge decks. Yep. We try to keep our cabins within the confines of the hull, and we try to keep our weight as aft as possible. And that stops the hobby horsing? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, and, and improves in performance, because yep. if you have weight forward, obviously the boat's going to dig deeper into waves, right. and that's going to slow you down, and then also the boat's got to bounce back out. So yeah, you would hobby horse more yep. the more weight you have forward. Um, so for our boat, you know, having this extremely lightweight but strong structure up front is really important. And then the strength, you know, again, we're just trying to keep the, the, the boat as stiff as humanly possible. Yep. And that, that makes the boat last longer, uh, it, makes, it makes the quieter noises we were talking about inside. And, uh, and also it kind of makes sailing enjoy enjoyable because of all the cool equipment that we see here. So what we've got, as you can see, we have a, we have a hundred, basically 100% uh, jib. We call it our stay sail because it is a little bit uh, aft of the crossbeam, but it's pretty much at the front. So that's why I say it's nearly 100%. And that's self-tacking? That's self-tacking. It goes to a, a curved track, which is important. Um, you know, if it's not curved, you know, it won't really self-tack. Yes. Uh, you have to come up and push it around. So that's, that's a nice piece. Uh, but then we have our, our Solent, uh, or your Genoa. Yep. That goes obviously uh, past the mast. So it's, uh, I think, I'm not sure if it's 110 or 120% of this boat, but a, a, quite a large Genoa for reaching. But back to the cars on top of the saloon roof. Correct, yeah. You've got cars so you can, you can adjust the, the, you know, the yep. leach of the sail. And then you've got uh, you know, an asymmetrical sail forward, and that's up to you. You could put a J1 on there for upwind, you could do a reacher, you could yep. do a Jenniker. Um, you know, for shorthanded sailing, uh, these are sails all furl, very easy for our owners to operate. It gives you a full um, sail plan to take the boat, you know, light wind, heavy wind, upwind, uh, down. All of the furling <clears throat> systems, that all goes back to the helm position as well? Yeah, everything goes back to the helm station so you can, you can uh, manage all these sails. Fantastic. One last cool part about this boat is we use a, a system called, it's a bullet. And a bullet is kind of like a pin on a, on a, on a pen. Yeah. I've got a pen here actually, it helps, uh -huh. helps, uh, helps describe it. it. But uh, what it is, instead of having a two to one halyard, <clears throat> where you'd have a halyard go over a sheave and then to a block, yep. and you hoist your sail that way, this is a single halyard with, a, with the bullet in the end. Right. The bullet attaches to the head of the sail, and then when you hold, pull that halyard up, uh, the bullet actually goes into the mast, and much like a pen, it kind of clicks into the mast. And yeah, so right. that holds all the load. There's yep. no chafing. There's not the weight of the additional block up there. There's no two to one halyard to deal with. And so you can- halyards themselves will last longer, I'm gonna guess. Yeah, probably. Yeah, well, yeah. certainly, because there's no stretch there's in the no halyard stretch. at all. Yeah. Uh, and so then that comes back down to the Cunningham. So the Cunningham is adjusted here. And this is a clever system. Instead of just using your, your typical jammer to hold a line to, to, for yep. the, to hold the sail tension, you know, the loads on this sail can be quite high. Yes. Uh, we use an Antel track that's bolted directly to the carbon Lantron. So you've got sort of mechanical to mechanical uh, strength holding it. Uh, and so that's what's holding the sail onto the boat. And then that's easy to bring down, put it in a bag on the trampoline when you're not using it, yeah. or just stow away in the sail locker. So Fantastic. it's a pretty clever 
system, and you can see why our, our owners all picked this. Well, that's not something I've seen on too many of the cruising catamarans around. No. No. So Seth, one of the other standout features for me was these bow lockers. They're massive. They're finally, there's a design of a boat that actually has the ability for people to walk in and out, not be pulling sails and big objects through standard sized hatches. Let's have a chat about that. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, you know, the more affordable way for a boat builder to do this would be just to use a typical Lumar hatch, uh, put that on the deck and that's what you go through. But you know, if it, if it were all about function and no corners cut, you would really build it this way, uh, which, is, which is phenomenal. You know, we've actually had an owner put a motorcycle in here with a halyard, um, they're so big. Uh, so you've got room to put all of your sails, which you know, it's a sail locker of course, but you know, plenty of room for toys, full-size stand-up paddle boards can go in here. You don't have to have them on your side rails. Yeah, right. And it's just a really convenient feature on all of our boats. Yep, yep. So finally, a design where we're not having to wrestle with objects. The other thing that really stood out for me was the struts. We've spoken about the 35 knots of wind that we had during the week. It's pretty windy at, right now, actually. None, at no time did I feel like anything was going to drop back down. You didn't get insecure about having things Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to climb into a locker, you know, when you're sailing and the wind is off to the side and have it fall on your head or have it lock you in there. So that's important. And then also the weather ceiling. So we, you know, we've gone through to make sure that the water is not going to come into the locker. Either. Yeah, fantastic. And then lastly, just to mention about this area, you know, we have two crash lockers. There is a crash locker up on the very extreme edges of the bow. And then this itself would be a crash locker as well. So if you do, you know, hit, encounter something in the, in the water, you're, you know the boat is safe. Yeah. So another really interesting feature on this boat is that there really isn't a jack deck joint that's visible. Uh, you know, all boats have to join the deck to the hull as they're producing it. And most boats would use, you know, a layer of Sikaflex uh, after they've bolted the, the two structures together, they use Sikaflex to kind of hide that gap. And that over time kind of can get moldy and dirty. Um, HH kind of goes through the process of, of physically joining it, sanding it, and, and then painting it. So there really is, n there's no deck joint visible at all, which is pretty unique. And then furthermore, um, you know, these, these carbon stanchions, we've got three sets of lifelines instead of the required two. Uh, and then the, they actually have solid epoxy here at the base uh, on the deck. So it's an incredibly strong structure. You're not going to have someone sit on this or lean on it uh, like my kids did a lot. And, uh, and then, you know, put a crack on the deck. So it's a pretty nice structure. So here we are at the helm station. Yep. Uh, as we mentioned on the OC, there's only one helm station set of two. You don't really need two helms. You know, on a, on a racing boat, you'd love to be able to sit on the windward side and see your telltales, but... We've still got the view of the sails from here. Yeah, we do. Um, but this, you know, one, one helm station controls the entire boat. That's actually quite nice for a cruising boat because you've got all the lines coming here to this one station. Yep. You've got two inches, you've got all your halyards, your sheets, uh, and your reefing lines here. Uh, all of your controls, uh, you know, this, this helm station is designed to be extremely functional. And when we say that, you know, it's very large. So two people could be here Roof operating. Three, well, three for <laughs> sitting, three's yeah. Three's cozy, but you can do it. Yeah, we'll try that later. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, for us, you and, I, you and I right now, if we were sailing together, we could easily, yep. you know, operate this boat. Um, you know, you could be doing the sheets and I could be hoisting the, the main and, and uh, you know, we've got all the instrumentation that we need. We've got a huge B&G screen. We've got our, our direct cable throttles to the engines. Uh, we've got our autopilot. This boat has got uh, two electric winches. Right. Um, and you operate those with your feet, so you have both hands to, to operate the lines. Uh, also important, I think, is, you know, are these runners? You know, not a lot of boats go the extra mile to put these runners on. So all of your lines are coming in a straight point, which obviously makes the jam cleats, you know, the pins and so on last a hell of a lot longer. Right. And then the lines themselves, uh, you'll probably notice are very nice. They're uh, Maffioli lines, yeah. you know, Dyneema core, you know, yeah. you know it's, it's really, again, no corners cut the best equipment and the best uh, operational helm station you could probably ask for. The electric winches um, also have a pretty nice safety feature in them with the emergency stop button. So if you see anything going wrong around the boat, it's yeah. boom, stop. Yeah, these... Then you can calm and settle everything down again and right. then turn it back on and, and commence underway again. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, those buttons are important and you know these, these uh, the foot buttons eventually go. And so you do need to have those safety features on the boat as well. Yeah, yeah. Two last things I'll mention, yep. uh, they're really important. If you look at this helm, you know, the reason we're up elevated high is so you can see over the boat. Yes. You've got a 360 degree view of the water around you. Yep. Um, you know, for, for someone on watch to be able to you know, really sit, sit back can. against this pad here and kick their feet up and be able to do watch up here and have the visibility, be near the instrumentation and have the lines ready yes. is, a, is a really nice feature. Fantastic. And then also the bimini itself. So you, you're, you're in the shade. Nice height. I mean, how tall are you? I'm 6'4", yeah, so no, it is that, tall. Look at that. Yeah, it's, it's quite tall. It has solar on the top of it. It's got a window here to see the sails, but yep. you know, most importantly, you know, you're protected. So 
a lot of the other boats, um, you know, might not have a bimini. You know, it does add a little bit of height to the boat. Yes. But you know, you're in the shade. You're you're um, you're not in the sun. You, when you're when it's rainy, you can come up here and reef. You're not worried about you know having to put on your rain slickers or or maybe not going out into the rain in the yeah. elements to do it. So it is quite nice to be up here. Well, let's face it, we've had a pretty tough week at the show. It's, the weather been, has been atrocious. It's been it's, pouring with now rain. Now the show is over and it's 30, beautiful. 30 knots of wind and today, the next day, which is a Well, that's why we're day. shooting our video today. <laughs> pretty funny, isn't yeah. it? So Seth, we're back inside the OC50 now. Uh, there's a couple of points that really strike me. is just the sheer spaciousness of it. Back to your height, but look at the clearance around you. The volume of size of the cabin as well it's it's deep it's long there's space inside rather than some of the boats are a little bit cramped still even though they're 50 feet yeah yeah this is you know a beautiful interior you know the woodworking the the, the space as you said the extremely large doors that open up uh, we do obviously want to try to get that feeling of space but then yeah. also you don't want to have that separation between the cockpit and the salon if, you know, the, with these huge doors while you're inside you still feel like you're kind of out out you know Absolutely. cruising and out in the ocean you know, the tables you mentioned are, are all produced in-house. We've got some truly um, talented woodworkers. It is all foam cord furniture. It's light, but um, you know, beautiful as well. And then, uh, as you said, it's, it's customizable. So while you, you can't change the layout uh, of the boat, the, the finishing touches are all up to you to decide on the 50. Yep. So you can pick the laminate, you can pick your wood grain colors, you can decide if you want a folding table or a drop-down table. You can pick the wood floor, you could have a real wood floor, you can have a synthetic floor, you can have teak, you can have synthetic. Um, the cushion Great. materials, you, know, you, you can pick if you want a cloth like a sombrella or if you want a synthetic suede yep, yep. like this. Um, and then you know, throughout all the, all the, really the places you see are, you know, are all covered in real wood. And it's just beautiful. I think the other as well, um, and this boat, the, the leather continuation up, up to on, onto the call of the dashboards and down <laughs> the mullions here as well. But I believe that you don't have to continue it. There's, again, the finishing choices is all up to the customer. Yeah, the mullions can be painted black or painted white, or in this case, as you said, you know, they're covered with the same material as the sofas, which, yep. which is a really nice uh, homey feel. So again, we're back to having some large spaces in, you know, there's two of us standing here, we're not little guys, and yet there's still room inside the galley for us to be moving and getting things. This boat, no gas, no propane, no LPG, whatever you want to call it, but it's an all electric boat. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, this owner didn't want to have any gas in the boat, so he's got an electric stovetop, electric oven, and electric barbecue grill. Yep. Um, all of our boats, uh, we really you know, believe in this U-shaped kitchen, U-shaped galley. Uh, that way you kind of have a, a place to lean against when you're underway, if you're doing dishes, because you know, we're out sailing even on a Boat's catamaran, it's going to be moving around a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, lots of storage, as you said, um, you've got, you know, the, uh, this is an option on the boat for your additional glassware. And then uh, the microwave option is also another feature to have uh, if you want to have a microwave and that's a, a great place to keep it. It just makes sense, doesn't it? It's a great use of the space. Yeah. And then over there, you've got two uh, fridges and freezers and these are all customizable. You can, you can make them either a fridge or a freezer. So it kind of can adapt to your needs. I hadn't understood at the beginning of the show that I thought it meant that the customer had to decide it's either a fridge or a freezer. but it's actually all temperature controlled. And so right. if you're underway in a passage, you could have four freezers. Yes. And now we're having a party on the boat. We could turn them into four fridges. That's yes. wonderful. It's very functional. And then lastly, the you know air conditioning. So our, these, mm. this owner has air conditioning throughout the boat. And just the level of detail that's been paid to the air conditioning vents is incredible. You could just have a, a simple plastic vent in the, in the, in the dash there. But instead, uh, the company's gone through the, the incredible effort to build a beautiful piece of art to to let the air conditioning go it through. It certainly is not only ducted there, but down underneath the bottom of the, lo the lounges at your feet. Right. And, and then ducted down into the, each of the cabins as well with individual controls at various points through the boat. Right. And then one last nice thing about this uh, galley and salon area is, is the rope lighting. So there's been yeah. special attention paid to all the lighting. There's, there's a lot of lighting, but it's all dimmable. Um, you know, and then also the rope lighting on the floors at night really gives you a luxury, kind of nice, nice feel. Yeah, absolutely nice touch. So the choice of finishes is really very much up to the customer. They can make the boat very much their own. Um, the interior here, I, I, I remember we we're talking the television actually comes up and out of the yep. bench and can spin almost 300 degrees. So whether you're sitting in the front lounge or on the side here, you've got multiple positions that you can be. The nav desk, and look at the detail of that and the visibility is extraordinary. We're you know, looking all around the boat, even through the foot of the mast and it virtually impossible not to see anything around you, which is just safe. Yeah, I mean, with every nav table, you want to have it, you know, looking forward um, through the glass. So you, you've got great visibility 
all your instrumentation is there. It's actually quite a large nav desk on mm -hmm. this model. Uh, he extended a little bit because for him, he wanted uh, more of a working area. Yeah, right. Okay. So Seth, on the starboard side of the boat, we've got a few options. This one is set up with cabins two and three. They're both with uh, queen size beds with all the under bunk storage and, and so on, as we've described already. Um, cabin three has got a couple of variability options. We can have double bunks, we could have workshop, we could have additional refrigeration. There's some flexibility in the layout and design, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so on the forward uh, cabin, we do, you know, it comes with a double berth, yep. uh, but there is a Pullman option where you could have a, a bunk bed that would come down. It's great for kids if you're cruising with a family. Uh, or you can have a, it's kind of a workbench pa pantry setup. So right. it would add more cabinets, a uh, nice long workbench, and then cabinets up above. Yep. And then we can also put an additional fridge and freezer in that. So it's sort of, if it's just a cruising couple and you might have a couple join you Some occasionally, time time to time. Um, but it's just you and you want more space or more storage, you can do, you can do that as well. Great stuff. And then here we have um, we have a uh, Jack and Jill um, sh uh, head and shower as well. Yeah. So both sides can kind of share that one uh, head. So that's a nice feature with the, with the split. And the reason we kind of do that as well is that um, now those heads can be vented with uh, with Lumar hatches, and yeah, the windows right. the windows look out rather than looking underneath the hull. So yeah, yeah. it's a nice uh, feature. It's also probably a safer way to get down the stairs. Yeah, right. And then aft, we have a, a queen size bed, just like the owner's hall. Um, yes. Same ceiling height, same big window. Big windows, lighting, ventilation, etc. So Seth, on the OC50, the owner's cabin's in the port hull. Again, just yeah. pointing out the sheer volume and space of it. It's a luxurious finish. We've got the queen size bed uh, with, the, with proper hotel or top quality home mattresses. There's a seam through the middle that enables you to be able to move the mattress easily and get to long-term long -term storage items such as extra blankets or winter clothing. Really well thought through. Uh, all of the controls, um, light switches, air conditioning controls, they're all here. It's all within finger touch. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a beautiful hull. Uh, it's very, the headroom is, is particularly impressive as well as that large window in the back. You can imagine, we're here on the dock, but mm. you can imagine in, in the tropics having a nice green water behind you would be beautiful waking up to. Um, you know, but also, you know, if you don't want to look out the windows, there, there are blinds throughout the boat. So this comes included in our boats and these are blackout blinds. So, so that's can, a standard feature. It just comes automatically. It's a standard feature and you can lock out all the lights. So you do have all these great windows, but then when you don't want them, you can get rid of them. Yeah. The, the, build, the build quality with these, not only if we've got soft touch closing doors and so on, drawers and so on, but we've actually got the build quality here so that whilst this is all lightweight construction, there's dowel in behind the hinges here. So the screws are actually biting into timber. Yeah, it's very important. A lot of uh, catamaran producers probably skip that step, and it's just simple. You can't screw a screw into a foam yeah. backing. It'll come out. Absolutely. Uh, so on our boats, you know, all of these screws are now uh, backed with cedar plugs, so, you know, they'll last a long time. Very good. The, um, all of the, the lightweight construction continues through. We've been lifting the, the, yeah. the floors and the hatches and de demonstrating the depth. There's still storage spaces inside. Everything's painted and finished properly, which is amazing. There's no, there's no shortcuts through the boat. Yeah, that's exactly what we say. You know, with with um, building in Asia, that allows us to have a lot of labor put into the boat. It so, gives us extra time. Right. Labor hours aren't really as much of a concern with us, so we can put in the time to finish the boat properly everywhere, even places you don't see. So you're not going to find any marine plywood, any exposed fiberglass edges to cut your fingers on. Yeah, right. Everything is finished inside. And then also the electrical you know, uh, systems and wiring is just it's spectacular. Yeah, spectac spectacular. So I mean, on a boat like the OC50, what sort of hours, man hours, actually go into building one? Yeah, so um, you know, we, we think we spent about 50,000 hours building one of these OC50s. 50,000. It's a lot of, a lot of labor. Um, and you know, it's, it's just a lot of sanding and prep. And if you want to do it right, it takes time. And so uh, they're really trying to do it right. And HH Catamarans that guarantee the weight of the boat within a few pounds, a few kilos. Yeah, weight is a part of our contract. So yeah. in our price list, you have the weight of the boat and then every single option we have the weight of as well. So as you click options, you know how much weight you're adding to the boat. Yeah. And then that goes into our build contract. So your options become your schedule three in the contract and we have to deliver you know, the options of course, but also on that weight. And that's how we get to the sailing performance again. Right. Yeah, fantastic. Now, Seth, it's a bit weird, the two of us in the bathroom together, but hey, again, the full height continues all the way through into the shower. That's, uh, I'm probably sounding very, very echo in here, but that height, the light, the space. Yeah, so this is the owner's head. Um, you've, you've got you know, your, your toilet, your sink, and a very, very large shower. Um, but probably the, the striking, most striking feature in here is the tech space, which we have behind this mirror. 
Yeah, the layout of that is just extraordinary, isn't it? It so sure is. Everything is, is totally labelled, placed, positioned. You should never have to work in there, but the reality is if somebody has to, you can identify what you've got straight away. Yes, you can. So here we are inside the, the centre line of the OC50. I'm still in the owner's cabin, but here as you come down the stairs into the, into, into the cabin, you're able to then lift those stairs. They're held up with the double struts, and it co you come to the fuel tanks, which are held in the centre line of the boat, both longitudinally and on the east-west sides. It's a reproduction of that in the starboard hull. The tanks are kept very low. Uh, everything is, is clamped, double clamped, and labelled X-Factory. There's a fuel polishing system, um, the system is just, again, like the electricity, beautifully put together. So, Seth, thanks very much for the tour of the OC50. It's a beautiful boat. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for taking the time to go through it with me. Yeah. Um, you know, we'd, we'd love to build, uh, you know, someone's dream boat. And, uh, you know, when you buy a boat like this, you know, with, with a high-quality boat, you also expect high-quality service. So I think it's worth mentioning as well that, you know, we really do want to support our owners when they're out there. Um, you know, boats do have problems and we're here to support you when, when you're out there cruising. And I understand when they're being built, we actually do send a, every two weeks, we're sending reports, photographs, production lines. The owners are welcome to actually come to the factory and actually see their boat being built. The experience is really top class. Yeah, that is unique. We do send a sort of a progress report and yep. you see your boat being built. Um, it's, you know, depending on the model, it's two weeks or four weeks. Yep. This boat would be two weeks and it's pretty unique seeing, seeing that and getting excited for when the boat gets yeah, delivered. It certainly would be a great experience. To request an info pack on the OC50, click here. To watch more videos about the HH Catamaran range, click here.